Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. In this video, I will be explaining you about regulation of glycogen. Now the glycogen regulation is explained by taking example of liver and the skeletal muscle. Because the glycogen is stored significantly in the liver in terms of uh, gram to gram ratio and also skeletal muscle is one of the significant storage tissue for glycogen in terms of total quantity of glycogen that is available in our body. Let's see how the glycogen regulation occurs in our body. Glycogen regulation can be classified into allosteric regulation and uh, hormonal regulation. So let me first explain you what is allosteric regulation on glycogen uh, synthesis and uh, degradation. You know in glycogen synthesis most important regulatory enzyme there is glycogen synthase. Whereas in glycogen degradation most important regulatory enzyme is glycogen phosphorylase enzyme. Now let's see what are the allosteric molecules that will regulate glycogen synthase and glycogen phosphorylase both in the liver and also in the skeletal muscle. Now, as I said, so we are going to take two tissues to explain you allosteric regulation of glycogen uh, molecule. Now, in the liver. So, let me explain uh, glycogen regulation allosterically in the liver. So, liver glycogen is stored as glycogen granules and synthesis of glycogen, it will come from glucose 6-phosphate which is converted into glucose 1-phosphate and that glucose 1-phosphate eventually it is converted into glycogen. This job it will be done by glycogen synthase enzyme. If you are watching this video, uh, I recommend you to watch my previous video that is on glycogen synthesis. So the link for that video is available in the description below and also it is available at the end of this video. Now, as you know glycogen synthase is the glycogen synthesis enzyme, it's a regulated enzyme there. Whereas the glycogen phosphorylase enzyme it is going to break down glycogen into glucose 1-phosphate which is eventually converted into glucose 6-phosphate and that will be converted into glucose in the liver. Now how these molecules are regulated allosterically? Now whenever there is availability of more and more glucose 6-phosphate in the cytoplasm, so when there is more glucose 6-phosphate, uh, glucose 6-phosphate you know it is a glycolytic intermediate. Whenever glycolysis is saturated, so there will be accumulation of glucose 6-phosphate. Why? Because you know glycolysis, some of the stages in glycolysis, so the glucose is converted into glucose 6-phosphate, uh, that's a irre uh, irreversible reaction there. Glucose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 6-phosphate, that's a reversible reaction and fructose 6-phosphate is converted into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate that's the irreversible reaction done by PFK1 that is phosphofructokinase 1. Now whenever glycolysis is saturated means whenever there is more ATPs available so ATPs more ATPs will have a negative effect on PFK1 and also whenever there is more availability of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate in the liver so it will have a negative effect on PFK1. So when the person is in well-fed condition and when there is a lot of glucose coming into the liver, so the glycolysis can be saturated to a certain extent. So whenever glycolysis is saturated, especially when PFK1 is uh, saturated, during that time there will be accumulation of fructose 6-phosphate which will be eventually leading to accumulation of glucose 6-phosphate because that is a, a reversible reaction. So that glucose 6-phosphate, so whenever there is accumulation of glucose 6-phosphate because there is simply saturation in glycolysis, you can take a look at my glycolysis regulation and glycolysis uh, related videos, link for the, those videos are also there in the description below. Now when there is accumulation of glucose 6-phosphate and that glucose 6-phosphate, it is going to positively modulate so glycogen synthase enzyme. So the glycogen synthase enzyme is positively modulated by glucose 6-phosphate molecule. So thereby glycogen synthase activity will increase that means glucose 1-phosphate is converted into glyco going into glycogen. At the same time glucose 6-phosphate 
form. Glucose 6-phosphate will have a negative effect on glycogen phosphorylase enzyme. Why? Because glycogen phosphorylase is an antagonistic enzyme for glycogen synthase. That is why glucose 6-phosphate has got a positive effect on glycogen synthase, negative effect on glycogen phosphorylase. And also note that excess levels of ATPs will have a negative effect on glycogen phosphorylase enzyme. Even excess levels of glucose in the liver, in the hepatocyte, will have a negative effect on glycogen phosphorylase enzyme. These are allosteric modulators on glycogen synthase and glycogen phosphorylase in the liver. So, let me repeat one more time. Glycogen synthase positive allosteric modulator is glucose 6-phosphate and for glycogen phosphorylase, negative modulators are glucose 6-phosphate, ATP and glucose itself. Now let's come to the muscle. So in the skeletal muscle, so, so the glycogen uh, synthesis and degradation, it is also again controlled by two enzymes, one is glycogen synthase, other is glycogen phosphorylase. So whenever glycolysis is saturated, similar to, uh, similar to what I have explained in the liver, whenever there is a saturation of glycolysis, so there will be accumulation of glucose 6-phosphate again. So the glucose 6 phosphate which is accumulated in the cytoplasm of the skeletal muscle. So it will have a positive effect on glycogen synthase enzyme in the skeletal muscle. Very similar to uh, glycogen synthase on in the liver, glucose 6 phosphate has got positive effect. In the same way, glucose 6 phosphate in the skeletal muscle will have a positive effect on glycogen synthase. At the same time, so glucose 6 phosphate will have a negative effect on glycogen phosphorylase. ATP will have a negative effect on glycogen phosphorylase in the skeletal muscle, whereas AMP, AMP will have a positive effect. Elevated levels of AMPs will have a positive effect on glycogen phosphorylase. You can understand that whenever there is more AMP, that simply indicates there is a lack of energy in the skeletal muscle. That means glycolysis has to go on at higher rate. So glycolysis needs substrate and the substrate for glycolysis is glucose 6-phosphate. So that is why when there is more AMP, simply indicates that there is lack of energy in the skeletal muscle. That is why AMP will act as positive modulator on glycogen phosphorylase, thereby break down glycogen and keep your glycogen phosphorylase active, thereby break down glycogen into glucose 1-phosphate, which is broken down into glucose 6-phosphate and glucose 6-phosphate is, uh, which is converted into glucose 6-phosphate and glucose 6-phosphate can go into glycolysis. So glycolysis will give ATPs. So when there is more AMP, glycogen phosphorylase is active, more and more glycogen degradation is going on in the skeletal muscle. So just to recap all the uh, allosteric modulators on the glycogen regulation in liver and skeletal muscle. So the glycogen synthase is positively modulated by glucose 6-phosphate both in the liver and in the skeletal muscle. Whereas glycogen phosphorylase is negatively modulated by glucose 6-phosphate, ATP and glucose in the liver. So glucose 6-phosphate, ATP and glucose are negative modulators on glycogen phosphorylase in the liver. Whereas in the skeletal muscle, it is only glucose 6-phosphate and ATPs which are negative modulators, not the glucose. And the AMP is the positive modulator on glycogen phosphorylase. These are allosteric modulation on glycogen regulation in liver and the skeletal muscle. Now I am going to explain hormonal regulation of glycogen and I will explain first in the liver and then I will go into skeletal muscle. So whenever person is in fasting condition, as you all know, there will be increase in the levels of glucagon. And this particular glucagon, it is going to go and bind to glucagon receptor so, glucagon receptor is a serpentine receptor, which is a G-protein coupled receptor. So, once glucagon binds to glucagon receptor, so the G-protein is activated by binding with the GTP there. And the active G-protein, so what it does, it is going to activate adenyl cyclase enzyme in the membrane of hepatocyte. The adenyl cyclase, uh, it is going to break down ATP into cyclic AMP, so there will be increase in the levels of cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP is a second messenger. Now what this cyclic AMP does? Cyclic AMP is further going to activate protein kinase A and that is PKA, protein kinase A enzyme is activated because cyclic AMP is going to go and bind to 
catalytic subunit in protein kinase A and the protein kinase A is activated. Now the activated protein kinase A, it is going to phosphorylate an enzyme called glycogen phosphorylase kinase. Glycogen phosphorylase kinase is inactive whenever phosphate is not present over its surface. Protein kinase A, what it does, it is going to convert ATP into ADP and there will be addition of the terminal phosphate of ATP to glycogen phosphorylase and the phosphate will be added that becomes an active enzyme. So the enzyme is active now. Now the activated glycogen phosphorylase kinase, what it does, it is going to activate glycogen phosphorylase which is uh, inactive when phosphate is not present. So glycogen phosphorylase kinase is going to break down ATP into ADP and the terminal phosphate will be attached to glycogen phosphorylase and that is an active form of an enzyme. Now glycogen phosphorylase is active so that is going to break down glycogen into glucose and phosphate which is further broken down into glucose 6-phosphate and glucose 6-phosphate is converted into glucose by glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme which is there in the liver. This is how the glycogen degradation is going on in the presence of glucagon. At the same time, note that glycogen synthesis has to be decreased. Now, who is going to decrease? How the glucagon is going to regulate glycogen synthesis process? Now, the glycogen synthesis, the regulated enzyme is glycogen synthase. The glycogen synthase enzyme. Now, the glycogen synthase, it is active in dephosphorylated state. It means whenever there is no phosphate on glycogen synthase and that is an active enzyme. So, what glucagon does is, glucagon by activating adenylate cyclase, cyclic AMP, protein kinase A. What this protein kinase A does? Protein kinase A, it is going to phosphorylate. Protein kinase A is going to convert glycogen synthase active into glycogen synthase inactive. Why? Because it is going to add phosphate onto the surface of glycogen synthase again by converting ATP into ADP. ATP is converted into ADP and phosphate is added onto glycogen synthase and that becomes inactive. That means glycogen synthesis will decrease, glycogen breakdown will increase in the presence of glucagon. Same mechanism will happen if there is elevation of epinephrine. Epinephrine which by binding to beta adrenergic receptor, beta adrenergic Beta adrenergic receptor of epinephrine is a G protein coupled serp serpentine receptor. When epinephrine binds to serpentine receptor, same mechanism will go on and epinephrine is going to increase, increase glycogen breakdown, releasing glucose. At the same time, it is going to decrease glycogen synthesis. This is what is the role of insulin, uh, glucagon and epinephrine onto glycogen degradation and glycogen synthesis. Whenever insulin is released, especially when the person is in well-fed condition, insulin is released. So that insulin binding to insulin receptor, insulin binds to insulin receptor and there will be signaling will be going on and uh, one of the signaling there is activation of protein phosphatase. Protein phosphatase, phosphatase enzyme is activated and this protein phosphatase enzyme, what it does, it is going to come and remove this phosphate from glycogen synthase thereby glycogen synthase becomes active enzyme thereby more and more glycogen synthesis is going on and also that protein phosphatase is going to remove phosphate from glycogen phosphorylase enzyme and thereby it is going to inactivate glycogen phosphorylase kinase and also it is going to remove phosphate from glycogen phosphorylase enzyme that means glycogen phosphorylase is also becomes inactive it is going to inactivate both glycogen phosphorylase and glycogen phosphorylase kinase thereby breakdown of glycogen into glucose 1 phosphate is decreased. That's what happens in the presence of insulin. Insulin is going to reverse whatever the things that was done by epinephrine and glucagon under fa fasting condition or stressful situation. This is the hormonal regulation on liver uh, where epinephrine binding to beta adrenergic receptor, glucagon binding to glucagon receptor or insulin binding to insulin receptor.
Now, one of the points that you should remember in this particular slide is, as you can see, uh, cyclic AMP, which is the second messenger, it can be neutralized, it can be converted back into AMP. It, can, it means you can break down cyclic AMP second messenger into just the AMP molecule, which is not a second messenger. And this job is done by an enzyme which is located in the membrane called cyclic AMP phosphodiesterase enzyme. Now, the cyclic AMP phosphodiesterase enzyme is inhibited by coffee and tea, especially the coffee which has got caffeine. Caffeine is going to inhibit cyclic AMP phosphodiesterase enzyme, thereby by inhibiting that enzyme, you are not converting or you are not degrading cyclic AMP into AMP. That means caffeine, it maintains high concentration of cyclic AMP in the cytoplasm and thereby this cyclic AMP is going to keep protein kinase active thereby glycogen phosphorylase kinase is active and then further glycogen phosphorylase is active and glycogen breakdown is going on continuously. This is one of the reasons why after carbohydrate loading, uh, athletes they consume uh, strong coffee at least an hour before uh, event like marathon event or any athletic event just to keep their glycogen degradation much faster by maintaining high levels of cyclic MP. Now let me explain what if epinephrine is binding to alpha receptors in the liver. So when the epinephrine binds to alpha adrenergic receptors, so it is a G protein coupled receptor. So what it does, it is going to activate phospholipase C enzyme. So the phospholipase C enzyme is activated, which is part of the cell membrane in the hepatocytes. Now the activated phospholipase C, what it does, it is going to break down a membrane lipid called phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate into IP3 that is inositol triphosphate and a DAG that is diacyl glycerol. These two are second messengers which are coming from phospholipase C enzyme. Breakdown of PIP2 into IP3 and DAG, these two are second messenger. What this IP3 does? IP3 is going to go to and go and bind to the endoplasmic reticular membrane and it releases uh, calcium from endoplasmic reticulum. So the calcium is released into the cytoplasm. Calcium comes out into the cytoplasm and the calcium will go and bind to calmodulin becoming calcium calmodulin complex. Calcium calmodulin complex is made here. Now, now, what is what this calcium calmodulin complex does? Calcium calmodulin complex, it is going to activate calcium dependent protein kinase enzyme. Now, the calcium dependent protein kinase enzyme, what it does? It is going to phosphorylate glycogen synthase enzyme. So, the phosphate will be added on to glycogen synthase and you know the phosphorylated form of glycogen synthase is an inactive form. So, glycogen synthesis will be decreased. And that's one of the job of calmodulin dependent protein kinase. What else this cal calcium calmodulin does? Calcium calmodulin is going to activate glycogen phosphorylase kinase enzyme. This glycogen phosphorylase kinase, once it is activated, what it does? It is going to phosphorylate glycogen phosphorylase enzyme into an active form of an enzyme. Glycogen phosphorylase is inactive when there is no phosphate present over it. So the ATP is converted to ADP and phosphate, terminal phosphate in the ATP is attached to glycogen phosphorylase enzyme and that becomes active enzyme. Okay, that's how you are going to activate glycogen phosphorylase and the active glycogen phosphorylase is going to convert glycogen into glucose 1 phosphate and that is further converted into glucose. Okay, so this is how glucose is released from uh, liver when epinephrine is binding to alpha receptor. Furthermore, uh, DAG, that is the second messenger coming from PIP2 in the presence of phospholipase C. So the DAG is going to activate protein kinase C enzyme. So the protein kinase C enzyme is activated and this active protein kinase C, what it does, it is going to keep glycogen synthase inactive because it is going to keep it in phosphorylated state. Thereby, glycogen synthesis decreases, whereas glycogen degradation increases. This is the mechanism of epinephrine if it binds to alpha adrenergic receptors in the liver. Now, let's move on to regulation of glycogen metabolism in the skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscles are the tissues where uh, a major amount of glycogen is stored in our body in terms of quantity. So, because the amount of skeletal muscle that we have, 
So as per that, there will be a lot of glycogen stored in the skeletal muscle. Now what is the purpose of glycogen that is stored in the skeletal muscle? So the purpose of glycogen that is stored in the skeletal muscle is to provide energy needs of contracting skeletal muscle. Now there are three mechanisms that will work on skeletal muscle in regulating glycogen breakdown process. And one is uh, epinephrine. Whenever we are in a stressful situation or when we are exercising, there will be release of epinephrine. So whether it is a fight, flight or fright reaction or whether it, uh, it is an exercise process. So there will be release of epinephrine and epinephrine binds to epinephrine receptor and that is a beta adrenergic receptor over the skeletal muscle. And the beta adrenergic receptor is a G protein coupled receptor. It is going to activate adenylate cyclase enzyme and this adenylate cyclase enzyme is going to make uh, convert ATP into cyclic AMP. So there will be cyclic AMP released into the cytoplasm. Cyclic AMP is a second messenger, so it is going to activate protein kinase A enzyme. And the protein kinase A enzyme, once it is activated, it is going to phosphorylate glycogen phosphorylase kinase. And the phosphorylated form of glycogen phosphorylase kinase is an active form of an enzyme. So furthermore, what it does, it is going to activate glycogen phosphorylase which is uh, inactive when uh, phosphate is not present over it. So it is going to add phosphate to this glycogen phosphorylase enzyme uh, using phosphate coming from ATP. So and the phosphorylated form of glycogen phosphorylase is an uh, active enzyme. So now your glycogen phosphorylase is active. So what it does, it is going to break down glycogen into glucose 1-phosphate. And glucose 1-phosphate, furthermore, it is converted into glucose 6-phosphate and glucose 6-phosphate gly gets into glycolysis. This is how uh, exercise or the fight, flight or fright reaction releasing epinephrine will help in the breakdown of glycogen. Now, at the same time, uh, glycogen, uh, sorry, protein kinase A is going to phosphorylate glycogen synthase. That is why phosphorylated form of glycogen synthase is an inactive form of an enzyme. So, enzyme will be inactive. That means glycogen synthesis decreases whenever we are exercising or in fight, flight or fright reaction. Our next mechanism. So, that's the first mechanism. Second mechanism in the skeletal muscle is the nerve impulse. When acetylcholine binds to acetylcholine receptor, and the nerve impulse is going on, so there will be release of calcium from sarcoplasmic reticulum. So this calcium which is released into the cytoplasm from sarcoplasmic reticulum, it is going to go and bind with calmodulin. So there will be formation of calcium calmodulin complex. Now this calcium calmodulin complex, it is going to activate glycogen phosphorylase kinase enzyme. Once you activate glycogen phosphorylase kinase, so it is going to further activate glycogen phosphorylase in active form into glycogen phosphorylase active form. Thereby glycogen is broken down into glucose 1-phosphate which is further converted to glucose 6-phosphate and that gets into glycolysis. That's the second mechanism. Now the third mechanism of breakdown of glycogen in the skeletal muscle is muscle contraction itself. When the muscle contraction occurs so the a myosin ATPase enzyme, it is going to convert ATP into ADP. Now the ADP further, it is converted into AMP by adenylate kinase enzyme, thereby there will be elevated levels of AMP when the muscle contraction is going on. And this elevated AMP, it will have a positive effect on glycogen phosphorylase kinase enzyme. That means it is going to activate glycogen phosphorylase kinase and thereby Glycogen phosphorylase kinase is going to activate glycogen phosphorylase in active form into active form of glycogen phosphorylase. Thereby glycogen is broken down into glucose 1-phosphate, then into glucose 6-phosphate and that gets into glycolysis. So like this, three mechanisms will contribute to breakdown of glycogen in the skeletal muscle. Note that glucagon do not act on skeletal muscle simply because glucagon skeletal muscle do not have glucagon receptors. Whenever a person is in fed condition, so when the glucose levels are more, there is insulin more, glucose is more, so insulin binds to insulin receptor on the skeletal muscle and it will bring glute force back to the membrane. So when the glute force are arranged over the membrane in the presence of insulin, 
glucose will start to enter in and also insulin will make sure that glycogen synthase is active uh, by maintaining it in dephosphorylated condition and glycogen synthesis will go on and insulin will remove phosphate from glycogen kinase and glycogen phosphorylase enzymes keep both of these enzymes inactive that is why when we are in well fed condition so the glycogen synthesis will go on in the skeletal muscle whereas glycogen degradation will decrease so this is how uh, glycogen synthesis and degradation will go on in the skeletal muscle this is all about regulation of glycogen metabolism specifically in the liver and skeletal muscle i hope this video has helped you in understanding this complex uh, process of glycogen degradation and synthesis in these two tissues thanks for watching and uh, make sure to subscribe to this channel and if you have any questions so put that question in the description below like or comment so see you in my next video